So really the main goal here is to remove the particulate matter that is coming off uh, due to the lasering process at the point of origin right here where the part is being cut rather than trying to evacuate this entire area through a little hole up here. I am hoping that's also going to keep the inside of the machine cleaner which is going to be less maintenance for us. If that does really exhaust enough of the particulate we can run this thing lights out at night going all night long making parts. That's the dream baby. Tycoon Mini Lays. Uh, this is one of our most used and most useful tools in the shop. Uh, we pretty much use this thing to do all of our laser marking for logos and things like that. Um, I also use it to mark, for example, soft jaws and machining fixtures and stuff that we're going to put into the machine. It's really nice. Uh, it's a lot easier than programming something to machine uh, into a part. You can just throw the part in there and zap with the power of light, you can mark it. One thing I have not been super happy with is the exhaust system. It was basically a two inch uh, vacuum port up here sort of in the back of the machine and it's just an open hole and it evacuates the air inside the machine through that and up and out through our vacuum system. Uh, it works okay. There is a lot of dust and stuff that builds up in here so I figure that's not ideal. The other thing that inspired me to do this is the robot because one thing I would like to do uh, is run the laser and the robot after hours uh, and mark parts when nobody's around. One of the problems with that is there's a door. Uh, this is the Mini Lays manual. I did not get the version that has an automatic door because at the time I did not need it. It was more expensive, all that stuff. So one option is just to have the robot run the door up and down between cycles, but that's a lot of airplanes. That's a lot of extra time. Uh, that's a lot of extra motion for the robot. It's more wear and tear. So I had the thought, I don't know if this is going to work yet, that if there's no one else around, we can run the laser with the door open because there's no one to get ex to be exposed to the ultraviolet radiation from the laser. However, that means all of that dust is going to be coming out into the shop, and I definitely don't want that. I've been noodling a solution to this for an embarrassingly long amount of time. Um, I tried some other vacuum tubing actually. You know how sometimes you'll see something on the internet and it just seems smaller or larger than you thought it was gonna be. Um, I did not really take a close look at the measurements. Uh, I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, there's an adapter for this down to two inch, I'll just put that in there. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but this thing sticks out of the machine. Uh, it's also not super positionable because it's, a large diameter, that's just, this is just not going to work at all. So it occurred to me one day uh, that we have a shop full of all kinds of tools, like the old 3D printer here, and uh, I could just make something and use existing stuff that was in the shop. So I just modeled up a little adapter in Fusion, uh, and it has a recess on the back that fits over uh, the vacuum fitting in the machine and it's got some ports on this side. Uh, these two holes are to screw in the lock line adapter, which I should probably have, uh, except on this one I messed up. I made these for half inch uh, NPT holes uh, when it really should have been 3 8 inch, which was fine because this inside diameter came out small. That's one thing, at least with my 3D printer, uh, I calibrated it on a one inch diameter so it will print a one inch diameter to within, you know, plus or minus five thou. But on any other diameter, that error starts to build whether it's smaller or bigger. So I had to reprint this anyway. I printed it with the right size. Uh, I actually tapped holes into the material. Can you see that? Oh, there we go. Which was crazy. So this is a carbon fiber reinforced PTEG, which is my new material of choice. It is much stronger than the non-reinforced stuff. I had no idea if I could tap threads into it or not, but it tapped quite well. 
Uh, and there's really no load on the threads. It's just a fitting that screws in. It seemed to work perfectly. Um, I did, so a pipe tap is tapered compared to a normal screw thread, which is straight. So normally you would drill a straight hole and then run the tap in. It's bigger at the top than the bottom. When you 3D print something, there's wall thickness. So I think on this one, I printed three layers of wall. You can specify as many as you want from one to whatever. Uh, I basically went with three because I knew that the tap wouldn't break all the way through all three of them. It's only gonna go through about two of those walls. But I actually tapered the hole because if it was straight, you remove when you put the tap in, you're removing a lot more material from the top than the bottom, and that was gonna break through. So I just actually tapered the hole uh, to the same taper as the tap, and it worked perfectly. Uh, anyway, here's the thing. The final one's in there. Let's take a closer look. All right, so here's our Tykema laser, and if we get in here closer, uh, you can see that this is the uh, vacuum outlet. Uh, so this is basically an exhaust, uh, and our parts sit down here, and basically I wanna have some lock line that comes over uh, and gets close to the part. Because one thing I would like to do with this machine is we're actually gonna try to uh, load parts with the universal robot right over here. Every horizontal surface in a shop gets stuff put on. So we're gonna try to uh, set up our adapter to work on this guy. All right, so here's my lock line and whatnot. Uh, I just did kind of a casual fit up just held it up in the machine and I think this is going to need to be a little longer. Das ist gut. That could not be any closer. They are actually touching, but I think we're good. So I got a long one and a short one. Let's go put it on the laser. All right, so this is just a little fixture that we use to uh, engrave the pen screws. And these are just some laser cut acrylic pieces. And this is all held in place with dowel pens. Um, the top of this table has a grid machined into it that we actually did in-house. Uh, would have been nice if the T-slot plate had already come with holes in it for fixturing, but this works great. This drops in here. Uh, and again, this is a, just a little fixture for lasering the pen screws, so just as an example. That's one of the parts we want to run with the robot. Let's see if I can do this without wrecking everything. Probably a little tighter fit than I would have wanted, but maybe that'll be good. All right, well, that was one of my questions, is, is this stuff gonna be flexible enough? I used a larger diameter, um, but part of it is we need to keep this out of the way of the robo, oh, yeah, that's nice right there. Bring this one in a little tighter. Um, so the robot should just be able to reach in let me adjust a little here. Uh, it's basically going to have a little arm with a vacuum nozzle on it. So it's going to reach in, pick up the part, take it out, put a new one in. So we've got these uh, nozzles lined up pretty close. It seems like a good spot. That might just work. Uh, so the other thing is about this, one of the problems is that if you're running the robot and there are people around, um, you've got to close this door to prevent uh, UV exposure from the laser. Um, so one thing I was considering was actually running the robot after hours when there's no one around, so there's no risk of uh, people getting exposed to the laser. However, you still need to exhaust uh, the powdered metal and fumes and stuff that come off of whatever you're cutting. So basically I was hoping that we would be able to do that effectively with these two nozzles 
rather than evacuating you know, air through this entire opening. It's just gonna be sucking out those fumes right at the point where they're being made. Uh, anyway, so we'll, I guess, have to try to do a smoke test and see if this thing actually works. But so far, it's looking good. All right, so that's pretty sweet, eh? I think it'll work. And again, the main goal was to try to remove uh, the dust, I guess. What would you call that stuff? Dust, particulate, particulate matter. So really the main goal here is to remove the particulate matter that is coming off uh, due to the lasering process at the point of origin right here where the part is being cut rather than trying to evacuate this entire area through a little hole up here. I am hoping that's also going to keep the inside of the machine cleaner, which is going to be less maintenance for us. Uh, and then if that does really exhaust enough of the particulate, we can run this thing lights out at night. Robot guy going all night long making parts. That's the dream, baby. <laughs> Thank you.